one of the 32 teams trying to get themselves in position to win what would be their second Super Bowl in three years. Joining forces with a guy that Tom Brady, once upon a time, took the ring off of his finger in Super Bowl 51. Julio Jones made that catch in Super Bowl 51 at the sideline, and that was the moment where I thought, this game's over. Nice try, Patriots. Thanks for attempting yeah. to erase the 28-3 to deficit. One but of the once Julio Jones ever. made that catch, it was over, yeah. and then it wasn't. And now Julio Jones, after months of free agency, with limited interest, just yesterday we wrote the story at PFT that the Colts GM Chris Ballard came out and said, I know there's stories out there that we're talking about Julio Jones. We're not. They're false. We're not. Because everybody thought, hey, Matt Ryan, Julio Jones together again in Indianapolis. No. Same day. Same day. The news emerges that Julio Jones signing with the Buccaneers, who, if he's if he's got any gas left in the tank, they're going to be loaded at receiver. There's that catch. That was it. He gets that, that trail foot down, and that game is over. He's the MVP. With that catch, that game is over. And it wasn't. Yeah. But what a catch. Incredible. It's amazing. Amazing. To yeah. get that foot down. That's Lynn Swan Super Bowl ten type of a catch. Yeah, no, it is. It is. It's a hell of a throw, too, to put it in the spot where like kind of only he could get it. But yeah, Julio Jones is he's in that conversation for greatest receivers of all time. He is. I mean, I'm not gonna sit here and say he's Randy Moss or Terrell Owens or Jerry Rice yet, but he's in like the next group of guys where we could all argue like who's four through ten. I mean, he's 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 all time special talent, but I don't know if it really like moves the needle for me right now, Mike. I don't know. It's a lot of sizzle. I don't know if there's a lot of steak there anymore with Julio Jones. I mean, what 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 is it? Uh, you, you, it's what nine games two years ago, ten games last year. Managing practice, you know, it's kind of you know one of these guys where hey, we don't practice all week, and then hey, you know, he moves around a little Saturday and gets ready on the you know pregame warm-up Sunday. So it's iffy. It's got some potential, but I'm not going to sit here and go, oh man, uh, not yet at least, and go game changer, game changer. Oh my gosh, the Bucks got Julio. Holy crap. We'll see. Maybe he can gather up and get healthy here and have a little bit of a second wind here to the end of his career. But as it stands right now, I'm kind of just going, all right, there's a little potential, but I'm not going to like go, oh, wow, this offense is another stratosphere now. In 10 games last year, 10 starts with the Titans. He had 31 catches, 434 yards, and one touchdown. Those were all career lows, including a year back in 2013 when he only appeared in five games. He had more catches, yards, and touchdowns in the season he appeared in only five games with the Falcons than he did appearing in 10 games last year with the Tennessee Titans. And there has been in recent years. And it started for the Falcons in 2018. I remember as this was unfolding. We've talked about it before. When Matt Ryan got to $30 million a year, yeah. that's when Julio Jones was like, what the hell? Yeah. Well, what the hell? Right. How is he worth twice as much as me? And the Falcons had a contract issue with him. And he still had 1,677 yards in 2018, Pro Bowl season. I mean, it was an incredible performance, but that was when the Fisher began with the Falcons and it felt like he was on limited time. They still made it three more seasons. But that last year, it just kind of, you kind of knew it was ending. You just kind of had that feeling that the train was pulling into the station in Atlanta. They made the decision to move on, traded him after June 1 to the Titans. High expectations, joining forces with A.J. Brown. Remember how Brown was so zealous no about doubt. trying to get him to come to Tennessee? And then it was just – it was a major disappointment. Like, people were surprised the Titans cut him after the year. It's like, well, you must not pay much attention to what he did or didn't do for the Titans. Of course they're going to cut him. They're going to pay him the second year of that contract, not after what they got out of him in his first season in Tennessee. No, that that's right. You know, and, and they, they, they need you know, somebody dependable there. They're not a, you know, a team that seems like they're uh, – you know, always going to be into just receiver, 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 receiver. They they kind of want to just seem like they rotate two, three guys there in Tennessee. And you're right again. You know, it's a it's a big figure in the locker room. You know, guys like that usually want a little bit more money than you know maybe they should really get at that part of their career. Uh, so I, I mean, I understand it. I am. You know, guys like this again. I think the Bucks are the type of team that's perfect for a Julio. And the fact that yeah, they don't. They're not desperate that they need his services. 
you know, every week, all the time. They're still pretty talented at the wide receiver position. I think this is like a hopeful for some icing on top of the cake here type of move to where you go, man, maybe we get him and he does stay healthy for 14 weeks and he does give us a few games where, oh, we saw a few plays of the old Julio and he helps us win a few games that we might not have without him. They, they recently signed Kyle Rudolph and yeah. he was viewed as the Gronk replacement, but in a weird sort of way, Maybe Julio's the Gronk replacement. The clutch third down catch. Big the body. Blanket yeah, for right. Tom Brady. Sure. Maybe in a weird sort of way, it's going to be Julio. Yeah, I mean, maybe it is. Uh, you know, again, he's he's a guy that can kind of do everything. He's smart. You know, he's going to know football. So he's going to be able to keep up with Brady in the offense and everybody there. You know, but yeah, it gives him another option, too. I mean, man, you, you, you do think about the fact of. Him, Russell Gage, Mike Evans, and Chris Godwin. The one thing that jumps to my mind when they signed him yesterday, I go, damn, is that the biggest four-person receiver squad I've ever heard of? I and mean, those are big guys. They're all 6'2", 6'3", 6'4", you know, pretty muscular and all of that to where, to your point, Mike, they can kind of Brady, oh, you got a guy on you, so what? Box him out a little bit. I'll put it in a spot. You can reach out and get it. But I'm interested to see, you know, what Julio Jones really does have left in his tank. I know he can catch the ball and get open a little. Can he make a special play anymore? Can he catch a slant and break a tackle and run for another 30 or 40 yards? I mean, that's to me, I think, the thing I want to see. I know he can get open for the slant and catch the ball, but is it going to be a six-yard gain or can we get something more? That's, I think, the big question with Julio. I remember Chris Godwin tore the ACL late in the regular season last year. This isn't a short-term Chris Godwin replacement. Godwin is active for the start of it's training amazing. camp. No pop list for him, which yeah. really is amazing. I mean, we we have kind of gotten to the point where we expect a right? guy. Isn't it amazing that medical science and the rehab process has got to the point where we expect a guy to be good to go after a torn ACL, even if it's late in the year? But – there are plenty of examples of guys who are back and ready to go, and Godwin is ready to go. So they have a pretty good receiving core. We're going to have a draft later in the program of the best receiving cores top to bottom in the NFL. And, Chris, two more points on Julio Jones. Yeah. First, first, it'll be interesting to see what he's getting paid. And any time the five-minute heads-up is provided to Shefty or whoever – and the numbers aren't there. Yes. And we've gone almost a full day with the numbers not being there. That means the numbers really aren't there. And I think that was one of the things Julio Jones had to come to terms with. He wasn't going to get paid anywhere close to what he was accustomed to being paid. I, I would think so. I would think that's why there was the delay. And then also pairing that up with... The fact of, yeah, he's at a point in his career where, you know, he's not going to, he doesn't want to go to a team that's unproven or he doesn't think he's going to be in the mix of things. Yeah, he's going to pick teams like the Titans and the Bucks, teams where he thinks, okay, maybe I can go get that ring that Tom Brady stole from me. So uh, that, that'll be, I, I'm going to guess, Mike, I'm going to say this. This is going to be my guess contract wise. You throw yours out there. I'm going to say he gets like 2.5 million base salary, but he's got a chance to maybe make it like, seven million with you know incentives or something like that that's going to be my guess Kyle Rudolph did one year two million with one and a half million guaranteed and another one and a half million in upside so I'll say it's going to be one year three million okay. with 500,000 of it tied to per game roster bonuses you got to show up and play to get the full three million and I'll say another two and a half million in incentive so I think it's gonna be one year up to 5.5 million that's my guess okay. what was yours uh, I said 2.5 with I didn't get specific I just said with some you know other things to make it richer so you know I'll say 2.5 up the chance to maybe if everything goes good to make seven million that's what I kind of said at, 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 at the end of the, the end of the day excuse if, me if we were playing prices right right i should have gone 2.55 million i'll say <laughs> three million base two and a half million upside five and a half million uh and that's why it wasn't broadcast to the world if if it's and it's going to be something like that if it was some amazing number it would have been right there in the tweet from shefty yesterday afternoon and another item yeah that was disclosed oh, okay. yesterday yep the other team did you see the other team that was interested no, I did don't you think see? I did. The two, the two quarterbacks in the suck-in-your-gut club, their teams were in the tug-of-war, well, yeah. apparently, 
for Julio Jones. But, you know, I think what the Packers are doing, yeah. when one of these big-name receivers is available, they act like they're interested right. just to keep Aaron Rodgers from getting his nose out of joint, and then they never close the deal. Well, well, they I mean, let the other team close the deal. Right. And, and to me, that's like a, they already got Sammy Watkins. It's the same guy in the same situation. Not going to be able to practice a lot, right? What does Sammy Watkins start on? The PUP list or the NFI, NFI list, right? He started there. You know, so that's just, you know, I, I, I don't, I, if I was them, I, I agree with you, but I don't know if that makes sense anyways. I don't know. Well, if but you have two of them, need some help. If you have two of them, maybe one, one of them's go. always going to be ready to go. Well, let me ask you this. When I made my comments about Julio Jones, you know, and I, and I really do believe that, that I think he's kind of in that next group of guys conversation wise, like Julio Jones to me is one of the receivers from this era for sure that goes to the hall of fame. And there's not that long of a wait. I, I do look at him and put him in a class of very, very special receivers there to where, yeah, I look at him as being one of the greatest receivers of all time. I do. He is 17th all time in receiving yardage. 17th all time. Yeah. Now, I, I think In a lot that, less years than the other guys that are ahead of him, too. Right, right. He's, he's behind Torrey Holt, Henry Ellard, Anquan Bolden, guys who are not Hall of Famers, Andre Johnson, Reggie Wayne, Steve Smith, there, there, there are guys ahead, and guys, guys like that are getting. Is Reggie Wayne in this year? Does Reggie Wayne did he get in this year? I can't even remember. This, they put so many guys in every year. I can't remember who's getting in. We'll find out. We'll be there next week, so we'll find out whether or not he's getting in. Don't tell me until next week. I don't think he but, did. But um, okay, so I, I, I think you know with Julio Jones, it's it's almost like his case would be better if he had just retired a few years ago, right? Cal Cal I mean, Calvin Johnson got in. Where's he on the all-time list? Yeah, he's down Calvin there. Johnson parlayed, you know, he's he's 32nd. Right. He's, he's well behind Julio Jones at 17th, but he parlayed a short career where it was spectacular start to finish. There's – and and look – Julio Jones only had two down years, but you don't want to have too many of those down years at the end of your career because it does kind of take some of the sizzle away from the full body of work. If the last recollection of the guy is three, four, five years of, hey, he's really not that good anymore. Yeah, I, I, I hear you. It does. It does. You know, but hey, they want to play. You know, I still think we look at Randy Moss and you look at his numbers and I still think of like when I look at it and go, oh, man, 15,000 yards and all those years. I, I don't think about, oh, man, the end with the, the 49ers or some of those teams. I don't know. Well, you know, now that the time has passed long enough, I do think of the glory years. I think of when he was special with the Vikings and the Patriots. So I think maybe sometimes that's just because of it's right now. We say that and think that. I don't know, but I think we do forget about it maybe in, you know, 10 years or at least time, as time passes a little bit. It'd be a no-brainer if they had won that Super Bowl. I, I don't That's think there's the any thing. doubt. I don't and, think there's and any when doubt. You said, when you said he's going to play with the guy who stole his Super Bowl ring, I thought, wait a minute, he signed it with the 49ers? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, it's not his fault. It's not his fault. I just know that you get mad about that. All right, so <laughs> here's another thing that I thought would be an impediment for Julio Jones. If you're not higher than fourth on the depth chart, who's playing special teams out of the receiver room? And you look at the Buccaneers now, you rattled off the names, Mike Evans, Chris Goblin, Russell Gage, you've got Julio Jones. They, they've got other guys floating Tyler around Johnson, there. Tyler Johnson, who we've talked about. Scotty Miller's still I mean, there. Brashad Perriman's there. You, you, you're going to have guys. Guys make that team are going to be playing special teams. Yes. And there's no way Julio Jones is going to be playing special teams at 33. That, that, you're right. That's where you know, that, that, that's where they're going to have to figure out how they want to do this on the roster. I don't think any of like, Really, those top four receivers you see there, none of them are going to play special teams. That's where it's going to have to fall on. You know, the Tyler Johnsons and maybe the Scotty Millers and all that. You know, Cyril Grayson, maybe he gets involved there. But, yeah, that's certainly going to be part of, you know, their discussion as far as who makes the team. Uh, they do have Jalen Darden, who's a small jitterbug guy that they drafted out of North Texas two years ago. He'll be the kick returner, punt returner type. But, uh, yeah, you're right, Mike. That's something they're going to have to think about when they, when they, you know, figure out this roster come cut time. You know, Scotty Miller kind of became out of sight, out of mind last year. I got I, 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 some of those guys aren't going to make the roster, and I'm uh, not yes. going to say which right. ones. But Scotty Miller just kind of fell off the face of the earth. He was, he was that guy you could count on in 2020 yep. for 
the big catch in the big spot out of nowhere. And that was it. One, he was good for one a game or every other game, a 50-yard catch, slipped behind the defense. Nobody pays attention. He makes the catch. Brady finds him. And last year, that just wasn't there. And I know injury was part yeah, of it. it was, but yeah. There's gonna be, they, they've got so many good receivers. There's going to be guys, and other teams are going to be watching, and maybe they can trade one or two of these guys because other teams are going to be saying, boy, we'd like to have one of those guys in our receiver room. So no doubt. Uh, we'll see how that, that plays out. Yeah. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.